Hey folks, I just wanted to offer a couple of really quick thoughts, observations on the sorts of argument I'm sure we've all seen over the last couple of years, which I'm starting to see more and more of again. It's the argument that essentially goes, look, Disney owns the intellectual property that Lucasfilm used to manage. And if they own it and they declare something new as canon, it's completely their right and prerogative. And you just have to recognize that the new films and the new books are just canon, right? It's just that simple. They say that to us, and they've said that to us for two years, as if they're saying something meaningful. I have to wonder, who are they saying that to? Who is actually making, who, who reasonably is actually making the case that Disney doesn't own it and that they don't have this sort of corporate prerogative and right to sort of declare canon what they declare? Who, who's still fighting that fight? We recognize that Disney owns the Lucasfilm intellectual property. We recognize that, unfortunately, corruptly, they have the right to put a paywall around a set of ideas concerning the Star Wars saga and declare a new direction for the canon. We get that. Our point is, we don't care. We don't like Disney canon just because it's the so-called new canon now. Just because Disney purchased Lucasfilm for an obscene amount of money. We don't care. Um, we don't mind that people love both the EU and the Disney canon. More power to them. I personally don't want to follow the Disney canon, but I'm glad that people who want to can, right? But what I want to hear from the Disney canon folks, particularly the folks who are both hardcore EU fans working to celebrate and advance the EU and Disney canon fans, what I want to hear from them is, uh, is that the Disney canon stuff is standing on its own artistic creative merits. And not just that, well, it's the new canon because after all, Disney owns it. What made the EU special was not the fact that it was canon. That's what made it extra special. What made the EU so amazing is that it didn't matter what medium, whether it was a book, a film, a cartoon, a role-playing game, a comic, what have you. This was something that over 35 plus years was offering continued, continuous, canonical glimpses into a world that actually existed. Uh, it was one vision, George Lucas's, one galaxy, Star Wars, multiple voices, right? It didn't have to be George Lucas contributing everything. Kevin Anderson, Timothy Zahn, you know, I mean, the list goes on and on. It didn't matter. Multiple voices contributing, providing glimpses into this world. The fact that it all tied together made it just that much cooler, right? But we didn't love it just because it was canon. We're not going to like the Disney canon just because someone says it's canon. Uh, it's going to take a little time. It's going to take, in fact, a lot of time. It's going to take a lot of quality work. And by the way, I'll allow Disney a few hits and misses here and there, right? The EU, you know, it's got hit and misses too, and we can admit that because we don't put all the eggs in the basket. We don't like it because we think it was all perfect. We don't like it because we think it was just perfectly canon. We like it because... We liked it because it was good. And in the same way, you're perfectly free to like the Disney canon stuff too. Just don't pretend as if we on the EU side, particularly those of you who are both the EU and the Disney canon fans, don't pretend like we're making arguments about how we don't recognize the rights of Disney and we don't recognize, you know, even the definition of the word canon. Again, we get it. We know that Disney owns Lucasfilm. We know that they're in a position to declare canon whatever they want. Again, the point is we don't care. We are interested in continuing to celebrate and continue the existence of the EU along whatever alternate track we can make that happen in, right? Star Wars was really getting to the point where it wasn't just the intellectual property of Lucasfilm. It wasn't just this big company, this big corporation. Star Wars was an almost, almost an idea, right? It was so much bigger than itself. It almost belonged to popular culture. Um, Disney, in buying it, said, we don't want to be another voice. We don't want to be contributing and offering further glimpses in this role that actually exists. No, instead what we want to do is we want to buy this commodity and we want to put a paywall around it. We don't want to offer a voice. We want to offer you a way of, um, you know, paying us to get in. Um, is it their prerogative, their right? Absolutely. I'm not making arguments about markets here. But... I do implore the fans, particularly those on both sides of the EU and Disney canon fence, not to make us seem like morons. We know, we get it. Disney owns Star Wars. They can declare 
whatever they wanted to be declared canon. Again, we don't care.